So let's have a lesson on this romance by Mertz. Um, this is a Romantic Era work, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, this piece comes from my Grade 2 Repertoire Lessons book. Um, my Repertoire Lessons book has a few pages of lessons before, or one or two pages of lessons before the piece, just to prep you for the piece, point out some um, interesting things or important things for you to practice before you actually play the piece. So throughout all the books, you should gain a lot of experience um, through different pieces and different techniques and, and things like that. So this piece by Meritz, Meritz had a very strong sense of melody. Um, he's really a big fan of of some of the music of his time period, such as Schubert and Schubert's leaders. Um, and he even arranged a lot of them for guitar that you might have heard before. Um, and I think this piece includes that strong sense of melody in the context of all this lush romantic harmony. So um, what we have to do in this piece is take really good melody playing and really good accompaniment and cho like chords and harmony and put them together so they work together really well. And that's the challenge, right? So I think the first thing you should do is play the melody on its own. That's my advice for every single piece forever. Um, I haven't written out the whole melody. I've only written out um, the first little line there and I've added some um, phrasing marks and some dynamics just to spark your interest. But remember the note is the top note with stems going up. go through the whole piece like that and I encourage you to do so. Um, phrasing and musicality and dynamics aren't always written in the score. So I've put a, a, the first four bars um, written out with dynamics and phrasing. So here's the first phrase. Kind of a question and then your answer. So the music says piano, but we can't really think about that too much. We must shape it a little bit. And you can use your voice as a guide. But remember, like, the first, you can't pound out each note. It just doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound human. Human voice um, needs time to open up. So we usually ease into our phrases. kind of like grow to that top note and then um, um, let it diminish as we get near the end. Same thing with the second phrase. You know, it just adds a more human quality. It's musicality, right? And phrasing. So I encourage you to go through the whole piece. There's no right or wrong answers. Um, there's certainly um, historical awareness and there's certainly... Um, you can be following, you know, your voice and things like that. But the main thing is to just do something. Do something musical. Don't just play the notes and grab the guitar. Um, that will not produce the result that you want. Now, practice that melody on its own, phrasing it really beautifully until you think you can do it nicely. Then add all the notes in. See if you can get that harmony and melody working together in that way. Not letting the chords interrupt the melody. That could really chop up the melody really horribly. So make sure you're trying to, to keep the melody phrased really nicely. And then you're just adding that harmony as a cushion of sound underneath. One spot in this piece that gives students trouble is bar 9 and 10. Um, bar 10 in particular. Here's my advice. First thing you should do is prepare the chord shape before you shift. See my third fingers there, my fourth fingers there? That way when I actually get up to seventh position or fifth position, all I do is go Dump. I just like drop those fingers into place. So easy, right? Like Um, but if, you're, if your hand position is like this, and then you have to like, 
try to like get your hand into the right shape while doing the shift, that's really tough. In reality, yes, you'll make the shape when you shift, but it has to happen before you arrive at the fret. If you've arrived at the fret and you have to reach out, it's not going to be very smooth. So make sure you make the shape and then the arm just moves that shape right into place. If you're having real trouble with it, you can try this. Play the low G and the high G together. And like practice just sliding that shape around. You hear some squeak and stuff like that. This is not the piece, but it's a way to practice. So the low G and the high G, and then just move that shape. Because that's what you're doing in midair, but this gives you a tactile kind of experience. Once you feel good with that, release your fingers from the strings and see if you can get that chord um, without changing your hand position much. So preparing beforehand. Um, the other thing that I'll say in this piece, there, there is some upper position notes, so we can talk about that. Um, where do those notes occur? Mainly on the last line. So we have this C, B, B. So that's fifth position. The fourth finger on the C. This is a guide finger down. So this is bar 18, uh, 17 and 18. Again, fifth position. Third finger guide. And then the 12th fret. main thing here is just to make sure that you um, know your, your positions are very secure. So like fifth position, you're like right, move right into fifth position, fourth finger down, but no readjustment, no going like this and reaching out or anything like that. Hand aligned, your arm moves right into fifth position, and then third finger guide finger to this chord, fifth position, like Organized before you play the note, right? Ninth position. Or. Last thing I want to talk about is right hand fingering. There's a lot of three note chords, uh, even four note chords in this piece. So you're going to repeat fingers. I'm sorry, uh, there's, there's no perfect fingering for this piece really. There's lots of repeated fingers. But on the moving eighth notes, you do want to alternate a fair amount. A, M, M, A. And it matters more when there's a three note chord like this one, M, A, I, M. That way you don't repeat a finger there. M, But the truth of the matter is you're going to repeat a lot of fingers whenever the chord comes up. So don't worry about it too much. Try to alternate on the eighth notes. Otherwise, don't worry about it too much and just go through the piece and focusing on your legato as much as possible.